It had been a long work week, and I was finally home. As I walked in from the garage, I heard my wife, Andrea, talking on the phone in the kitchen. She was sitting at the island, enjoying a glass of wine. I poured myself a glass and joined her. Michael, mom wants to say hello. I'm putting you on speakerphone, Andrea said with a smile. Hello, Michael. How's my favorite son-in-law doing? My mother-in-law greeted me. Doing fine, mom. You know I'm your only son-in-law, so the competition isn't that tough. I replied playfully, but you'd be my favorite no matter what. She said warmly. We chatted a bit about a show my dad and I had watched, where a husband and wife discussed building trust in a relationship. My mother-in-law always offered relationship advice to keep our marriage strong. Some were helpful, while others not so much. We decided to give the cell phone exchange a try, just like the show suggested. As I brought up the idea, I noticed Andrea flinched slightly, seemingly uncomfortable with it. Despite her reservations, she agreed to try it out with me. After a moment, we said our goodbyes and hung up the call. There's no better time to switch phones than now. I told Andrea, handing her my cell phone and taking hers in return. Michael, give me my cell phone back. This is a stupid idea my mom suggested. I don't need to look through your phone, I trust you completely, Andrea pleaded. No, Andrea, I think it's a great idea. Trust is something that has to be earned, and it can't be ignored, no matter how long we've known each other. I know I have nothing to hide, so look through whatever you want, Michael. I insisted, feeling hurt by her reluctance. No, we don't have to do this, she protested, sensing my suspicion. But her reaction confirmed my doubts and I couldn't resist the urge to open her text messages. It didn't take me long to find out what she was trying to hide from me. Today, she was communicating with someone named DJ, and it appeared my marriage might be in trouble. As I scrolled further, I saw a few, I love you, messages and even a few intimate pictures of them together. Andrea realized she was caught and rushed to the phone, but I was faster. Do you want to explain what I'm seeing here? Who the hell is DJ? And why are you sending him naked pictures of yourself? I asked, feeling a mix of anger and pain. It's not what it looks like. She tried to defend herself. I think it's exactly what it looks like. Do you love him? How long has this been going on? I pressed, needing some answers. Michael, please just give me my phone back and we can talk about this," she pleaded. No, I think I'm going to keep it for a while. What you're going to do is pack your underscore underscore and get out of my house, I said, my voice filled with hurt and anger. Andrea's face showed remorse and guilt as tears began to roll down her cheeks. The trust we once had was shattered, and I knew it would take time to heal, if healing was even possible. After the confrontation, Andrea went upstairs to pack her things. Feeling hurt and confused, I wanted to understand more about the person named DJ. From the pictures I saw, it seemed like he was not any different from me physically. Devastated by the betrayal, I called my brother, who works in law enforcement, and asked him to find out more about DJ and his connection to our situation. He discovered that DJ's name was David James and also obtained his home phone number. While I was on the phone, I made two other arrangements. I ordered a cab for Andrea from her phone account and gave her dog some prescribed medicine to ease her discomfort after surgery. When Andrea came back downstairs, she asked for her phone, wanting to talk things through. I decided to be firm and told her that the only things she could take with her were her dog and purse, not the phone or the car I bought her. As the cab arrived, she took her belongings and stood by the curb. I felt a mix of anger and heartbreak, unable to comprehend the betrayal. She turned to wave at me, but my emotions got the better of me, and I showed my frustration. Determined to find out more about DJ, 
I decided to call his home phone number. A woman answered the call, and it turned out to be his wife. I shared my concerns, only to learn that she had also been betrayed. She appreciated my honesty and the information I provided. In the aftermath of this painful revelation, I decided to seek legal advice to end the marriage. The trust we once had was shattered, and the road ahead was uncertain, but I knew I had to find closure and healing in my life. 